this is going to be another question and answer video. And this question has to do with, should a Christian smoke or use tobacco products? And this is a great question. It's just something that I don't talk about much because it just doesn't really come to mind. So it's good to have these question and answers because then I got all these questions that I, about topics that I may not mention otherwise. So the question, is it a sin for a Christian to smoke, chew, dip, or use any kind of tobacco products? I want to start off by saying that you can overcome any sin that you have if you'll get saved and trust in the Lord and walk in His Word and prayer. I'd also like to say that I don't think someone who smokes is just an outright wicked person. I've never been in their shoes. If I was, I might have ended up an even worse chronic smoker. I'd also like to say I have more respect for a smoker who's trying to live right in all other aspects of life than I do for a loud mouth gossip or for a deadbeat dad or for a woman that downs her husband all day. But with that being said, this video is two Christians, Christian smokers. If you're not a Christian, then your main concern should be believing on Jesus Christ, not giving up smoking. But if you're a Christian, you do really need to give up smoking. And I'm going to show you why. Uh, the answer, the quick answer to the question is, it is a sin to smoke and use tobacco products. So there isn't a verse that says using tobacco products is wrong, but there are verses that come to mind. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. When you smoke and use tobacco, you aren't following the command of this verse. The Lord bought you. You need to glorify God in your body. Smoking and using tobacco is not good for your body. Are there worse things? Of course. But the question was about smoking. Cigarettes. Not about meth. Not about marijuana. I'm just answering the question. A lot of times when you answer the question, someone else wants to say, well, it... This and this and that is so much worse. Sure, there are things that's so much worse. But the question's about, is smoking cigarettes wrong? Smoking is not good for the body. Our, our body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. We need to walk in the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 16, it says this, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Another thing that comes to mind about this subject is being a stumbling block to other people. Lost people and saved people. 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. If you've been around lost people in the workplace for any amount of time, then you know exactly what a lost man thinks about a smoking preacher, about a smoking deacon. They think that they're a hypocrite. There are even some Christians that will go as far as thinking you are lost if they saw you smoking. Now, I myself know there is a lot of smoking Christians. I know that Christians don't always do what Christians ought to do, so I'm not quick to jump and say, well, they're lost, they're wicked or anything. But not everyone thinks like me. If you're seen smoking, then you are not abstaining from all appearance of evil. I've never smoked, not even my, in my lost life, but when I was young, I would run to the store and get cigarettes for my grandpa. And after I got saved, I, I got under serious conviction just for picking up the cigarettes for my grandpa at the store. If someone saw me buying the cigarettes, then the average person is going to believe that I'm smoking the cigarettes. That's not abstaining from all appearance of evil. So I had to tell my grandpa that it wasn't right for me to do that. Very kindly, very respectful, because he's older than me, and also a Christian, been a Christian much longer than me. And at the same time, this had to put him under conviction as well. And I recently worked with a guy who smokes, and he kept wanting me to take his cigarettes back down to the, to the break room. 
I didn't want to be seen with the cigarettes. There are lots of people watching me all the time. I can't be smoking and dipping and cussing like all the other people. It ruins my testimony. Every lost person is looking for an excuse not to listen to a Christian. And he will use smoking for that excuse. He's going to be like, how are you going to tell me what I need to do when you're smoking and dipping and cussing and whatever else it may be? Did you know one of the most common sins in the Bible are sins of the mouth? Adam and Eve put something in their mouth that they weren't supposed to. Noah drank something he wasn't supposed to. Abraham told a lie with his mouth. Jephthah made a horrible vow with his mouth. The men who blasphemed the Holy Ghost did so by saying something with their mouth. In Revelation 13, unclean spirits come out of the mouth of the dragon. The Bible is full of sins of the mouth. We're all the time having something come out of our mouth that shouldn't and putting something in our mouth that we shouldn't. The list goes on. There's something about cigarettes that just screams rebellion to the average person. In 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. When you see a teenager smoking cigarettes, what does the average person jump to conclusions and say? They are being rebellious. Cigarettes is associated with rebellion. Another experience I had just recently is I was working with a, a new person who claims to be a preacher. He talked to me about his problem with smoking. And I said, well, for every sin you stop doing, you need to replace it with something holy. He spends all this time smoking, and when that has gone away, he needs something righteous to put in place of smoking, or he's just going to go right back to smoking. But anyway, he smoked at work, and all the guys were like, these preachers just think they can do whatever they want to. They want to tell us how to live, but then they just do whatever they want to. And that's a scary thing to me because I don't want to bring shame to the Lord's name. I don't want to give anyone occasion to blaspheme. I don't want to give someone an excuse that they can hold hands with on their way to hell. Some people will go to hell on seeing a preacher smoke a cigarette. They'll see the preacher smoke and they'll use that excuse for the rest of their life and go to hell on that. Then they just wind up in the smoking section of eternity. In Revelation 14, 11, it says, The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. They'll see a preacher smoke and they'll say, These Christians are just hypocrites. I can be just as good as they are. And they'll go to hell on that. Another thing is you'll start relying on cigarettes instead of the Bible, instead of prayer, instead of God. They start putting confidence in something like a cigarette to help their stress, their depression, to help them make it through the Mondays of the week. The, and bad days, uh, people can do that with anything. In the Bible, they always trusted in something else other than God. In Psalm 20 and verse 7, it says, Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Are you trusting in your cigarettes and your monster energy drinks and everything else to get you through the day, your coffee? If coffee's something that uh, you can't, you just can't go without, that you're, you're uh, under the power of that. I mean, I drink coffee, but I'm not under the power of coffee. You see what I mean? I mean, you can bring anything. You can turn anything into something that you're trusting in more than God. You see people smoking a cigarette, and they'll put their hand on their forehead and the cigarette in their mouth, and you can just see all the relief and the calmness that they're getting off the cigarette. That is what it becomes, and I don't know the half of it because I've never smoked, but I've always been around smokers, and I watch people. And Christians need to have self-control, and smoking shows a complete lack of self-control, as, as does things like overeating, oversleeping. But the question was about smoking. Pretty much anything can become an idol. Anything can become something that you're putting ahead of God. And many times when you do a study like this, people think you're being unbalanced and just pointing out one sin. No, that's not what we're doing. The question was about smoking, which is no doubt very harmful to you. 
Now, there's all kinds of stuff that we do that's harmful to us. Probably that we don't even know about. But smoking, I mean, it's, it's. I mean, even the even the the label warns you. It says warning. It's gonna call. It can cause cancer and all these other things. There's no secret about it. There's no debate about it. There's a lot of things that some people say it's bad for you. Some people say it's good for you. You don't really know about some things. But there's no debate on the smoking. It's bad for you. Now, is it as bad as drinking alcohol? Absolutely not. But 1 Corinthians 6, 12, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. If we are brought under the power of something, then we're doing wrong. It's like I, I mentioned coffee. If you're brought under the power of coffee, then that's wrong. You know, anything that you're doing, any type of food, food in general, are you brought under the power of food? Is that controlling your every thought? Are you completely overeating? But that boy I work with, said the good thing about working with me is he doesn't get time to smoke a cigarette. But all he talks about is smoking a cigarette. He's gotten to a place where he's constantly thinking about his next smoke break. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down at imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is easier said than done, but if all you're relying on is Jesus Christ, then you can go a lot longer than someone who needs cigarettes, needs a dip, needs pills, needs a nap, needs a Snickers, needs coffee, just has to have it. I, I like to be at a place where I'm not just having to have something. You know, I like to drink tea, but I don't just have to have tea. You know, I like to eat food, but I don't just have to have it at a certain time. I can go. I can skip meals. If I don't have coffee in the morning, it'll be all right. If I don't have it for lunch, it'll be all right. Some people smoke because they think it looks cool. Some of uh, the, the people that do the vaping, they do tricks with the smoke coming out of their nostrils and stuff. They make it come out of their nostrils a funny way and everything. I guess this makes them feel like they're really accomplishing something. Or something like that. But when you do this as a Christian, you know, it really hurts your testimony. Blowing the smoke out of your nose. Where does that come from? In Job 41.20, Leviathan, which is the devil in his natural state, blows smoke out of his nose. It says in Job 41.20, Out of his nostrils goeth smoke, as, a, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. The Lord himself also blows smoke out of his nostrils. In 2 Samuel 22, 9, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Something about smoking must make men feel cool or powerful or something because the most two powerful beings in existence blow smoke out of their nose. So it's something about it. It makes men feel powerful. It makes them feel cocky they even may hold the cigarette in a cocky way or blow it out of their mouth in a cocky way or do their little vaping tricks and things like that so that it's it's a mixture of many things of why people are addicted to smoking many people they start because they are being rebellious many people do it because it's a it becomes a stress relief a depression relief the word that they're going to gain weight if they stop Many people do it because they think it makes them look cool and they're cocky while they do it. There's so many reasons why, but there's also even more reasons why you should not smoke as a Christian. And I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but the question was, should a Christian smoke or use tobacco? The answer is no, it is a sin and you should stop as quickly as possible. Now, you're probably not going to be able to stop right off. But every time you, you, put, you hold that cigarette in your hand, remember that God wants you to stop. And remember you need to replace the smoking with something else. Not all sins are easy to stop doing. 
some sins you stop the moment you get saved. It just it just comes easy for you. For me, it was cussing. I I was a cusser before I was saved. When I got saved, I pretty much stopped cussing immediately. And, and then and then there's other sins that you just struggle with. For example, if someone had a problem with gossiping or you know, constantly saying something negative about somebody else, that may last for a while after they get saved. Or, you know, anything. It could be any sin. Maybe they're struggling with listening to bad music. For me, that was one that I was able to stop immediately. For other people, that's an, their addiction, and that's what they're struggling with. The thing that you're struggling with is the thing that you really need to zero in on and try to get rid of it. Let the Lord help you get victory over it. And you have to replace it with something else. That's a key. If you're going to quit smoking, you have to replace all of that time you spent smoking with something holy. Praying, reading your Bible, something. But this has been a question on should a Christian smoke? Should a Christian dip or chew? The answer is no. We need to give things up like this and let have the Lord let us get victory over it.